Hello you lot, this is Keith Cooks, I'm Keith and today I'm going to do something that I tried uh, about three years ago and didn't really succeed at so this is a second attempt at making a scotch pie and I have to do a massive shout out to Rick Bear who made a comment a week or two ago where he said um, could I try and make uh, a pie, a sort of, probably a Scottish pie, it's very hard crust and it's got like meat in it, maybe, <laughs> but he couldn't remember the name so I said, uh, I pointed him at my old Scotch pie video, he said that's it. Yeah, I had a look at it and I thought, no, I can't let that stand, I've got so much stuff wrong there. <laughs> Which is kind of understandable, I've, I've, I've watched lots of other videos, read lots of recipes, they're all different and mostly they're all wrong, but there we go. Anyway, Rick read through all of the comments on my first video and has sort of condensed the ones that actually gave advice in, into a set of rules, if you like. So basically, the pastry shell is critical. It's got to be really thin, really hard and really crispy. Um, and the reason for that is so, so it'll stand up when it's baking and uh, also hold its shape while you're eating it, you know, probably from a peg bag at a football match. And the filling has got to be uh, a bit peppery, it's got to be lamb or mutton, and it's got to be greasy, <laughs> fatty, and, and if you can get the fat to dribble down your chin, then that's champion. So that's where we're at. If you enjoy this video, press like. Um, okay, scotch pie, here we go. The only kind of pastry you can use for this kind of pie is hot water pastry, which is also what's used for pork pies. It's very, well, um, robust. <laughs> I think and actually it's massively easy to make. So I've got 450 grams of plain all-purpose flour, teaspoon of salt, mixy mixy and then I've got 150 grams of lard cut into bits and 150 ml of hot water and I'll just pop that on the stove to melt the lard. If lard is a problem for you, you can use beef dripping or tallow or probably any other hard fat, but lard is, is the ideal. Now the lard is melted, so I'll just put half of it into the flour. Let's stir that in. I do it in two stages because it's just easier. And then stir in the rest of it. So I'll just finish that off by hand. Now we'll wrap it in plastic film and you want it to cool down to about room temperature because it's hot. I won't put it in the fridge, I'll, I'll just leave it out for a bit. So I bought a couple of actual scotch pies from Morrison's. These are made by Bells who are, well, a Scottish pie company and probably the, uh, the biggest maker of scotch pies, you know, mass market commercial ones. So there it is, that's what your scotch pie should look like-ish. I'm not sure about that bellying, I've seen ones that are, have a straight side, but anyway. So on the back, I had a look at the label to find out what the ingredients are. And what it says is seasoned minced beef in pastry, beef 11%. And that's it, produced for Morrison's, da da da. Which is just astounding because it's supposed to be mutton. And if you can't get mutton, you use lamb. Beef, well I think it's just wrong, but I don't know. And then the characteristic thing about scotch pies is that the top is recessed, so there's a kind of upstanding rim around the edge. It's not very neat on this one, but um, I would say that that is meant to be about a centimetre. So they're actually incredibly thin things, and I guess they would need to be so that the, uh, the uncooked meat inside gets cooked. Okay, I'm going to heat that and do it in the air fryer. 180 Celsius for Oh, 10 minutes. Okay, there we go, one scotch pie. Now, normally you would put, you know, fillings in there, or uh, like beans, or peas, or chips, mashed potato, gravy, whatever. Okay, there we go. And normally, you know, you would eat this at a football match out of a uh, paper bag, sort of thing. Oh, that's nice and hard around the edge. Ooh. Well, that is weird. It's really bland. Um, I couldn't actually tell you what that meat is. Okay. 
I'll eat that later, you don't need to watch. <laughs> Mrs. Keith Cooks had one yesterday and she actually quite enjoyed it, so I'm saying nothing. It's okay, you know, not the greatest thing. Right, the dough is uh, it's, it's still quite warm, but it's okay. Now what I'm going to do is uh, make six pies. Two of them I'll bake today after the shells have been chilling in the fridge for three hours. Then at the same time tomorrow I'll bake another two and then the day after, which will be Wednesday, the final two, and then we'll see what's what. Now you're going to need some rings to form your pie shells in. So I've got these crumpet rings, which are uh, actually a little bit smaller than the, the Bell's one. That's nine centimeter, three and a half inch diameter. I've also got these cutters, cutting rings, which are a bit too big, uh, 10 centimeters, four inches. Failing that, you could get, a, get yourself a, a tuna can and cut the top and bottom off, but be careful of sharp edges. Okay, so flour on the worktop, bit of dough, and roll it really as thinly as you can. A lot thinner than what you would normally do for a pie. Now I'm going to use the rings to cut the lids. And now, uh, I don't know if this is obligatory, but you do see a lot of scotch pies that have a big hole in the middle at the top. I think it looks quite nice. So I use the end of a funnel. And I'll just stack them up. We want some greaseproof paper between each layer, otherwise they will stick together. Right now, pop pastry into the rings. So I've, I've actually buttered them inside and also I'm going to make sure there's lots of flour on the pastry so that we stand a, a good chance of being able to get it out. Just press it down. Don't fold it or crease it. Now we're going to make the filling, so basically what we need is fatty lamb. I've got here 300 grams of lamb minced, ready minced, and I don't know what the fat content of that is because it didn't say on the label. So just as a backup plan, I got these lamb ribs, which we've got a little bit of bone going through about halfway along, and lots and lots of fat, so I'm going to sort of debone those and slap them in the mincer and put these in the fridge for now. So that's 300 grams of lamb, meat and fat without the bones. So that's great. Right, and whack it through here, the world's noisiest mincer. So I'm going to make up the seasoning mix. You need a teaspoon of salt, one and a half teaspoons of ground black pepper, because it should taste pretty peppery, and a teaspoon of mace, half teaspoon of thyme. Mix them together. Now I just need to combine the two kinds of mince with the seasoning. And the absolute easiest way to do that is with your hand. Okay, these two shells have been in the fridge for three hours. It's not entirely clear when when you should do this, but I think, you know, when it's been in a few hours and it is kind of set, I just want to figure out what's the optimum amount of filling. So uh, that, that shell is 62 grams and the the Bell's pie was uh, 112, was it? 113 grams? So if I have 50 or 60 grams here, so it doesn't look like enough, but that is 64 grams again. So, And, you know, press it down. So it's like a little hamburger inside the shell. And then we'll put the lid on and I realise now <laughs> that I made a mistake. Yes, I did. I made a mistake by cutting these with the rings that I used to form the shells. So 
I've got the outside diameter, not the inside. <laughs> In you go. I've noticed with Scotch pies you don't really seal the, the, the lid to the shell. But there you go, there's a nice recess to put your gravy and your beans or whatever in. Now one thing we noticed about the, uh, the Bell's pies that we sampled was that uh, they had a golden um, glaze to them, like uh, egg wash, which isn't really what I've seen on other Scotch pies. Other Scotch pies, you just glaze them with milk, so that's what I'm doing. If I was doing more than two, I would bake them in the oven, but that's just a, a bit of a waste when you've got an air fryer, which is essentially a convection oven. So I'll set that on 180 Celsius. If you were using a conventional one, that would be 200 Celsius. So I'm going to bake these for 35 to 40 minutes. Well, here we go. And a slightly weird looking Scotch pies. Because uh, they seem to have <laughs> seem to have puffed up a bit. That was, that was right down there. Well, also they're browner than I'm used to. So I think maybe with uh, tomorrow's batch, I'll I'll glaze one with milk and I'll leave the other one not glazed and see see what difference that makes. Okay, quick taste test with Mrs. Geek Cooks. Right. So this is a, a stage one taste test, is it? Yes. Ooh, that's crisp. Oh, oh you have that one. Oh, okay. So, you tell them we both tried the shop bought ones. Oh, yes. Because um, I really liked it, which surprised me. Surprised me? Because mm. I hated it. And this is with lamb, isn't it? Yeah. So, so the way it should be. Mm -hmm. So, one of the things I liked about the shop bought one was. That sort of um, animal fat mouthfeel. Mm -hmm. So I was glad to see you were putting in the fat. The, yeah, the fat from the lamb. I'm not crazy about it because of the pastry. It's a bit. It's also supposed to be softened by the fat coming out of the meat. Mm. I don't know if there's enough of it. When I saw the Scotch pies that you brought home from the shops, I've never seen Scotch pies like that before. To me, Scotch pies are always pale. They look as if, well, they haven't been baked. Mm. Um, they have, but they ain't pretty. But, you know, I used to like them. No. But you explained about... Covering, the, covering it with beans and things. You put stuff on top and mm. that softens it and everything. Right. Back tomorrow with an even crunchier one. All right, I'm going to bake the second batch of uh, Scotch pies. So these two little ones. I'm saving the two big ones for tomorrow because those should be the wonderful ones. Right, I've, I've, <laughs> I've trimmed my lids down a little bit. Oh, they still don't fit. Oh, flipping out. Yeah. Oh, I'm losing my mind. It's because uh, the thickness of the, the wall thickness of the shells as well needs to be deducted. Okay, I'll trim those with a knife. I was complaining yesterday because the meat wasn't fatty enough, so I'm going to add some fat. I've got just a bit of lard that's been in the freezer for an hour, and I'll grate that in. I'm also going to bake it cooler and for longer, which hopefully will give the fat a bit more chance to, to melt and um, do its job of softening your pastry. There's a filling inside the shells. So I'll just uh, grate some lard on top and then we'll pop a lid on. The other thing I'd said I'd, I'd do was experiment with not using a milk glaze. So I'm just going to glaze one pie. I'm using the air fryer because there's only two pies. So if you were using a fan oven, which is basically what that is, uh, you want it on 160 Celsius and that is 180 for a conventional one and that's gas four. So I'll just pop those in and I'm going to give it 35 minutes, see how we're doing. First thing you notice is the one without any milk glaze on it is a disaster. That looks absolutely horrible and you'd think twice about eating it really. Uh, the second thing is the lids come up again. Uh, so Maybe I need to concentrate more on making it fit perfectly and actually sticking it on. 
Finally, is it cooked? It should be at least 71 Celsius. Oh, it's well over <laughs> 90. And now, oh, well, yeah. Taste test. <laughs> Not really. Well, it is, yeah. That'll be taste test <laughs> part, part two. two. <laughs> Duh. 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 Oh, Which Duh. one do you want? Uh, well, this is the one that looks more like what I expect a scotch pie to look like. Yeah. Because it's not golden brown or anything. Extra like some. I was going to do that. But I <laughs> Cliche. <laughs> okay, we've got crispy pastry again. Oh, it's still too thick. I think I need to put it through my pasta machine to get it really thin. Mmm. Mm -mm. mm. I like the filling. Okay. Yeah, I like the pastry better. Mm hmm. I don't know if you can see. It's kind of. It has got fat soaked into the pastry. I think it'll be even better tomorrow, mm -hmm. actually. Because yesterday the pastry was just too crisp. Um, not crisp like toast, but sort of like borderline hard, but crisp. Okay, good. We're getting there. Yeah. So I can't wait for tomorrow. It's interesting, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> All right, see you tomorrow. Right, the Scotch Pie Saga reaches its gripping finale shortly. I have decided that these lids that I made at the beginning, they're not going to work. So I'm going to make some new lids with some leftover pastry, which has been wrapped in film all the time, so it hasn't dried out. Okay, there we go. Put the hole in the middle. And then I want to weigh out the remaining filling mixture. So that's 190. Now we had um, previously about 60, 65 grams in each one, but these are bigger, so 80 odd. Yeah, I think the added lard worked quite well on yesterday's. So I'll do that again. And I don't think I need to actually freeze the lard. So I mentioned yesterday that I was gonna stick it in this time so that um, they don't they don't float up and so that they don't rise up and stop us from having that well in the top to put our gravy and beans or whatever in. So moisten the edges with water and uh, I have cut it slightly oversized so there's a little a little bit we can fold up and press against the inner edge of the pie. And a quick glaze with milk on both of them. All right, here it is. And uh, once again, I've failed miserably to get the to get the lid recessed. I don't know why. Obviously, I'm putting far too much filling into it. I find it very hard to to put less in. I'm sure they'll be wonderful. We'll find out shortly. And now, time for the taste test, number three, <laughs> with Miss Sears. Keith Goats, who is in the doghouse, because I finished late. So, mm. so you've had to microwave this to warm it up, haven't you? Yes. So, so any comments about the crispy pastry are lies? <laughs> Except it is. Maybe that's another thing with the scotch pies, because it's a very unusual approach to pastry, isn't it? Well, no, it's hot water pastry, uh, All right. which is what we use on pork pies. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, nothing wrong with pastry, except that, you know, they, <laughs> they roll it super, super thin and then dry it out for two or three days till mm. it's solid. Um, so, you know, I mean, that's... Doing that has worked in creating a shell, uh, but the, uh, well, the rest of it, you know, the, the recessed lid didn't happen again. Yeah. So, yeah. But I think because, because you had to microwave, which is my fault. Okay. Right. So I think this just goes back to kind of the, the way the pastry was on Monday. <laughs> so yesterday it was better. So, um, Mm. I apologise for, um, what's the word, sabotaging your... Yeah, that. Mm. Okay. Thanks for watching and... Do try this. Honestly. Yeah. 
if you've got the time and you can be bothered. It's a, it's a really interesting experiment. Well, I haven't had to do the work. <laughs> but from a taste test point of view, really so, worth it. Thank you for watching mm -hmm. and see you next time. Mm -hmm. And as punishment, here is Mrs. Keith Cooks demonstrating mum dancing. You rotten so and so. <laughs> okay, this was it yesterday. All right, let's have the live version. So, what's it doing? Oh yeah. <laughs> See my happy dance. Because you can't you can't dance much in a kitchen, can you? Because you know there's a liability. There's a back for you as well. Oh look at that twerking. I'll bet that'll get um, edited out. I'm a lovely mover. <laughs> <laughs>